Hello again. Today we have another couple of stories from relationship advice. The first deals with a roommate issue. The second deals with an abusive ex who ruined a woman's friendships. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This story is titled, I 26 male, want to charge my roommates, 26 male, girlfriend, 26 female. I 26 male, live in a three-bedroom apartment with two roommates, both 26 male, in a large metropolitan city. We moved in together right before Thanksgiving and overall really enjoy having them both as roommates. This past summer one of my roommates, we'll call him roommate A, got a new girlfriend. I really like her and am together, as does my other roommate, roommate B. Roommate B recently approached me to talk about something that has been bothering me for a while, roommate A's girlfriend pretty much lives at our apartment. By this I mean she sleeps here six to seven nights a week, works remotely from our apartment four to five times a week, and orders her packages, groceries to our apartment. She lives in a three-bedroom apartment of her own that's just a five to ten minute walk away, yet they're both always together at our apartment. As I mentioned, we really like her, him and the two of them together and this couldn't be any less personal. However, the matter of fact is that she pretty much lives here. She's good about cleaning up but at some point, if you're going to be here as often as she is, she needs to be treated as a fourth roommate. This means chipping in on rent, cleaning supplies, and utilities. Roommate B and I want to have a conversation with roommate A to tell him how we feel. Again, it's not personal, but if she's going to live here, she should be treated as a roommate. I have three questions. Are we, roommate B and I, wrong for bringing this up? If so, is it inappropriate to throw out the idea of having her pitch in for expenses, or is that too much? Any advice on how to approach, handle this would be much appreciated. Comment 1. I've been through this before with a roommate when I was in college. Except it wasn't a girl that was staying at our apartment for long periods of time. It was a guy. There were four of us men sharing an apartment and that guy made it five. This guy had his own apartment but didn't like any of his roommates. So without asking, one of our roommates, his best friend, just let this guy sleep on our couch, eat our food, make messes that he didn't clean up, take our long showers, sit around watching our television all day, etc. He would also do illicit substances in our bathroom. He thought nobody knew, but he didn't realize that we could see remnants of white powder under his nose when he left the bathroom as well as on the sink. If any of us left for the weekend or holidays, this guy would sleep in our beds to get a break from the couch. I asked the roommate who let this go on as to when the guy was going to go back to his own apartment and he just said, he's not here all the time, what are you talking about? He was oblivious to the fact that the guy had essentially moved in. The two of them and the other roommate seemed to have no problem with the situation and I was the bad guy for even mentioning it. They started excluding me from things and what not because I wasn't being a good friend. Apparently, they liked that guy better. Then one weekend they all got drunk and they told me how they felt about me in no uncertain terms. They did not like me and wanted me out of the apartment so this guy could move in. If I didn't, they were going to trash all my stuff and throw it outside when I wasn't there. Then the friend, not any of the roommates, got violent with me and hit me in the head and tried to push me out of my own apartment. He didn't get very far and I could have hurt him badly if I wanted to, but I just told him that if he did anything like that again, I'd call the cops and he'd go to jail. I also said that if they trashed my stuff or threw it out, I would also press charges against them for malicious destruction of property, etc. It was a rough night, but there was no more violence and nothing they threatened actually happened. After that night, I contacted the apartment management and they helped me find another apartment away from those guys. It was still in the same complex so I didn't break my lease and my new roommates were much nicer to put it lightly. The next year at college, one of the roommates came up to me and apologized for everything and we became friends again. He also shared that he didn't like the situation with those roommates either, but that he didn't want to be ostracized like I was. We became friendly and I kept in touch with him through Facebook and stuff. He's let me know over the years what's happened with those guys. One got in some deep trouble for a terrible accident he caused during a DUI. I think he's in prison right now. The other one, who was friends with the guy that crashed at our apartment, drove a truck for a living and he also had an accident. It was on a freeway and it caused multiple fatalities. I guess he fell asleep at the wheel. Since he was driving on behalf of his own company, he got sued into bankruptcy. I guess he had to spend a few years in prison for that too. The guy that crashed at our apartment died a few years ago. 
He was fairly young. I saw the obituary, but it didn't actually say what he died of. I guess he was just found unresponsive in his house one morning. I'm pretty sure the illicit substances contributed to his passing. So, in a long roundabout way, op, the situation could be worse. At least the girlfriend cleans up after herself. Why don't you ask them to move into her apartment? Then he would be her roommate's problem. Comment 2. You are completely right to bring it up, but you need to read your lease because her being there that often probably is a violation of the lease's guest policy and if the landlord finds out and he finds out you and roommate B knew about it, all three of you could face, at minimum, fines and could even get evicted. If she's in violation of that policy, you need to tell roommate that either she only stays enough to be considered a guest, signs on as an official tenant with the landlord, or you and roommate B are going to have to report it to the landlord to cover your own asses. Comment 3. It's 100% appropriate. The fact is, you signed up to live with two other people, not three. She's taking up time and space in your shared public spaces, making it impossible to ever be home alone, slowing down your Wi-Fi speed, etc. Also from a legal perspective, there are laws about how many nights one can have overnight guests per month to avoid her from gaining tenants' rights, effectively squatting. You can also pull the, we don't want to get in trouble with the landlord card. Either you agree to have her move and contribute financially as a full-fledged roommate or they start spending more time at her place and the deliveries and work from home stop. P.S. A couple in a room should be paying more than one person in the same size room because of use, wear and tear of other areas. Comment 4. Fair enough to bring it up. I think there's a few angles to this one. Utilities, more people equals higher bills, so you should split costs by the number of people. 2. Use of space, it's an extra person in the bathroom, kitchen etc. I don't think she and BF should pay 50%, but definitely more than the 33% they're currently paying. 3. She's not someone you agreed to live with. Some people are happy for someone to effectively move in as long as costs are covered, others don't want to live with more people, live with a couple etc. and specifically pick the original roommates for a reason. It's something that needs discussing between you and B before you talk to A, are you fine with GF to be around as much as she wants if she pays her share, decides to move in? Or do you want her to cut down on her visits? E.g. no working from the apartment, only stay over three nights, whatever is appropriate. Also as a few others have mentioned, can you legally add her to the lease or does her presence put your tenancy at risk? Comment 5. With the amount of time she spends there, I agree with you. Either she starts chipping in, or starts spending way less time at your place. You are in the right to bring it up. I can't tell you exactly what to say, but recommend bringing this up to both of them at the same time. So that you and the other roommate can make it clear to both of them that this isn't personal against her, that you're fine with her spending that time there, as long as she contributes. This story is titled, My 26 female, abusive ex, 27 male, ruined all of my relationships. How do I fix things? Five years ago, I met this guy. Once I was living with him, he went from polite and well-mannered to cruel and sadistic. Around the third year of our four-year relationship, my friends started cutting me off, one by one. Within a year, I went from having more friends than I could count to about three. Those three friends, 26 male, 25 female, 28 male, showed me messages sent from my phone and email address saying vile things about them and telling them that I never wanted to hear from them again. When I checked my sent, deleted folders, there was nothing there. I found out that my ex sent those messages, and then deleted them, in an attempt to isolate me. It worked. Fortunately, those three friends helped me leave him. I left him in April last year. I'm in therapy, I'm doing good, I even started seeing someone, and I really miss my friends. I don't know who got messages and who didn't, but I've contacted a couple of them to tell them what really happened, and they told me to go to hell. The people I miss most are my brothers, 31 male, 29 male, 22 male. We had a rough home life, and we were each other's support systems. I don't know what the rest of them received, but I know my oldest brother got a message saying he was just like our abusive dad, which isn't true at all. And in the message my ex took something I said out of context to make it more convincing. I miss my friends, and my brothers. I want to repair these friendships. But no one believes me about my ex sending the messages, and my brothers in particular were sent very personal messages designed to hurt them worse than my non-related friends. I don't know what to say in a way that they'll believe. I don't know how to convince them. 
I've been trying for months now and my old friends aren't willing to give me the benefit of the doubt, and I don't even know what to say to my brothers. I've tried asking each of my brothers if we could talk, but one blocked me, one told me I'd already said everything I needed to say, and the third left me on read. Is there anything I could say, or do, to mend these relationships? How do I adequately apologize for something I didn't even do? Is there any way to mend bridges? Comment 1. So not one friend ever called you and asked why you were sent messages like that. Your brothers never confronted you directly and you never saw these friends out in town. I have a lot of questions here. Not saying you're lying but how was it that not a single friend asked you about what was happening directly? If my best friends or family started attacking me via text randomly, I would be very concerned for them and wouldn't brush it off until I heard what was up first hand. Comment 2. Could your friends talk to your other friends or your brothers? Could they write actual paper letters? If they were to say that they had this experience and it was your abusive ex who sent the messages, that might help convince people. Honestly, I don't think these people are acting that great. If one of my friends sent me a series of ugly, out-of-character messages I would think, is something really wrong? Are they having a manic episode or a psychotic break? And if they came to me later and said, you know that guy that I broke up with? He faked those messages because he is an abuser, the reason they seemed so weird and out of character is that I didn't send them, I would be absolutely ready to believe. And I mean, I've cut off a friend for saying ugly things, so it's not like everyone in my life has always been lovely. Otherwise, the only thing I can think of is to wait a year and try again with your family, maybe by letter. It's easy to delete an email or a text unread, but actually tossing a physical object is a bit harder. What was done to you is horrible and insidious. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you cut off your abusive parents and that this makes your family situation worse. And it's not easy just to start over. Comment 3. This is horrible and I'm sorry that you had to go through this. I hope the path you're on is much more positive now. As for your friends and brothers, you already told them the truth. I would personally send one more message, explaining the situation again. Then just leave it. If they won't even give you the time of day, or if they actually believe that you are capable of even doing something so bad like sending those messages, then those are people you don't need in your life. I know it's easier said than done but you already have a lot going on, and it's always better to focus on yourself first. Thank you so very much for listening. Please check out my other videos and like and subscribe.